You may like him or not, you may agree with him or not, but with the ongoing EV meltdown, no one can deny that Akio Toyota was right about all the challenges of the unison approach to zero emissions and sustainability. The charismatic chairman warned us long ago, but no one listened. EVs are not the solution, and now when many EV makers are stumbling, Akio Toyota shocks everyone again. But before we get to that, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button because more content like this is coming. A certified petrol head. Akio Toyota is much more than just another chairman and former CEO. Unlike most of his colleagues, he is a genuine car enthusiast, someone who occasionally sneaks out and uses a pseudonym to participate in racing competitions. In one word, a petrol head. And that explains his stance on electric cars and the automotive future. It's no secret that Toyota is not a fan of EVs, and many use this to accuse him of being too old to understand that the industry is changing. The best example was the board meeting back in the day when the Japanese automaker had a meeting with some of the European investors. Some of them, like the Church of England Pensions Board, were from the UK, but most came from Nordic countries like Denmark and Norway, countries that are known as frontrunners in terms of EV adoption. As someone who is not an EV enthusiast, Toyota pointed out all the challenges that come with electrification. He pointed out that while countries like Denmark and Norway are ready to embrace electrification, most of the world isn't. Eventually, he summed up that Toyota is not going to ditch internal combustion engines in the near future. And not only that, investors didn't listen. They even accused Toyota of leading the company into disaster. This event, along with a few others, put tremendous pressure on the company's management. So Toyota was eventually forced to step down from the CEO position and let the younger forces lead the path. Toyota ended up as a chairman, leaving room for Koji Sato to take the wheel and lead the company to the future. But luckily, he remained the most influential figure in the company. Against boards, politicians, and fake ecologists. With the new CEO stepping up on duty, it looked like things would settle down a bit. But Toyota's influence was still there, which was crucial for the upcoming fight for Toyota's own way, for its unique approach to zero emissions. Namely, almost the entire automotive industry went all in for the electrification. Toyota warned about this approach long ago. But the fight was on many fronts. It wasn't just about investors, who were worried about the company's ability to make a profit in the future, the fight was on a much greater scale. First and foremost, there were the governments of the most developed countries in the world. They were all insisting on fast and smooth electrification, setting pretty ambitious goals to go fully electric by the end of the first half of the next decade. Toyota had no doubt that this was way too ambitious, but politicians found a new way to force Toyota to start producing EVs. Of course, it was about emissions, with governments setting pretty strict rules that in practice meant that car makers needed to have EVs in their offers to avoid fines. All these moves were justified by the fight for the environment and zero emissions. Logically, green activists were against Toyota as well, but Toyota found a pretty interesting way to shut them. With his team of scientists, he proved that hybrids pollute less than electric cars in most parts of the world, because most of the world still heavily relies on coal to produce power. And if, take that the same amount of raw materials that are used for one EV battery is enough for six plug-in hybrids and 90 self-charging hybrids, it becomes obvious why Toyota came up with such claims. Instead of focusing on a single EV that uses electricity that predominantly comes from coal, it is possible to reduce emissions for 90 cars. Is it better to have one electric car or 90 vehicles with significantly reduced emissions? The answer is easy listening to what buyers want. Going all in on EVs is a mistake. We must give consumers the choice to choose. With new rules, governments are forcing car companies to produce electric vehicles. Eventually, they will leave consumers without any other options. So Toyota clearly pointed out that one of the biggest problems with this rapid electrification is that everyone seems to neglect what car buyers really want. According to Toyota, people are seeing the reality of EVs, as we are getting more experience with EVs and therefore better insight. We are realizing all the limitations that come with this car design. For that reason, Toyota eventually came up with the estimation that, at their peak, EVs won't account for more than 30% of all new vehicles. 
There are many reasons for such claims, starting from the fact that we are decades away from adequate infrastructure that can ensure the seamless operation of electric vehicles. But more importantly, some people will never accept electric vehicles for practical reasons. They are not thrilled with the idea of changing their complete lifestyle to own an electric car. To remind you, owning an EV requires a lot of compromises, whether it's about charging, limited battery performance depending on the weather conditions, etc. Finally, as Toyota stated, we are living in a world where more than 1 billion people still live without electricity. Do they find EVs appealing? Certainly not. EVs are out of reach for many. This leads us to one of the biggest issues of the EV adoption. Electric cars may be great in some aspects, but they are still way more expensive than gas-powered cars, and therefore out of reach for many. Of course, developing countries come to mind first, but customers in wealthy countries have their concerns too. Just take the US as an example. In this wealthy part of the world, people are still adopting EVs at a significantly slower pace compared to Europe, for example. Of course, price plays an important role because an average EV purchase is nearly $60,000 in this part of the world compared to $48,000, which is an average sum paid for a new car. EVs are more expensive, but the new technology is not the only reason. One of the main problems is that now with EVs, every company sees itself as a premium car maker. It's a real rarity to find a modern car maker that designs electric cars with an average driver in mind. Instead of honest, practical design, these cars are usually over-designed and full of unnecessary features that only add to the price. But the MSRP is just a part of the problem. It turns out that, in contrary to what's advertised, electric cars aren't cheaper to run than their gas-powered counterparts, especially for those who rely primarily on public charges and can't enjoy the benefit of low-cost home charging. Then there's the insurance cost, with significantly higher premiums compared to gas-powered vehicles. Then there is the repair cost, especially after an accident, where even the smallest defect in the battery housing or some other part could cost you a fortune. Not to mention the concerns people have about potential battery changes once the warranty expires. CO2 is common enemy. Carbon is our enemy. But BEVs are not the only path to carbon neutrality. Toyota repeated this sentence on many occasions, pointing out that despite the EV skepticism, he doesn't undermine the noble cause of achieving zero emissions. To him, the only difference is the approach. Most car makers, backed up by politicians, have taken a uniform approach, where there is no alternative to battery electric vehicles. For Toyota, that's problematic due to all the limitations we had a chance to learn about. After all, the ongoing EV meltdown clearly shows all the weaknesses of such a strategy. The growth is slowing down, and now all those companies that push too hard for EVs suffer. Suddenly, these companies are unable to manage massive losses, caused by the combination of below expected sales and inability to make EVs profitable. That's why Toyota insists on a multifaceted approach, to give customers the opportunity to choose the kind of vehicles they want. Hybrids are there as a transitional solution, but battery electric vehicles aren't the only way to zero emissions. The Japanese company is simultaneously working on various technologies. You probably already know that the company has been working on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, but now Toyota claims it has something even better, an internal combustion engine that burns hydrogen. Then there is an engine that burns methane, which imposes itself as a promising alternative to electric cars, not only because of its sustainable features, but also because of significantly lower running costs. Finally, Toyota is not walking away from EVs. Despite the skepticism, Toyota is perfectly aware that EVs will account for a decent percentage of the market. That's why new EVs are also in development. The company already launched the all-electric BZ4X, but a completely new EV platform is in the works, and it should serve as a basis for 10 all-electric vehicles in the future. Hybrids are our reality. Toyota has been working on hybrid technology for almost three decades, and we can all agree it showed the path for everyone when it comes to electrification. However, many believe that once EVs takes a swing, this would be just a short-term transitional technology that would soon enough find its place in history books, but wouldn't leave a bigger mark in practice. They were wrong. While most legacy car makers barely sell any of their EVs, Toyota has sold more than 202,000 electrified vehicles only in the last quarter of 2023.
It's clear that full electrification won't be possible in the next few decades. And meanwhile, hybrid technology will be the one people will be relying on. Affordable prices, less challenging ownership, and a simple overall layout are the reasons why hybrids will only get even more popular in the future. Even the last year brought a massive jump in North America, where hybrids now account for 8.3% of the total car market. Of course, Toyota is leading the pack with its palette of hybrid models, where besides proven self-charging systems, famous for their simple layout and unparalleled reliability, there is also a new generation of electrified systems including plug-in hybrids, such as the one found in the RAV4 Prime, as well as those based on turbocharged engines, which debuted recently in pickups like Tundra and Tacoma. Do you agree with Toyota's diverse approach? What are your thoughts on EV zero emission alternatives? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.